Maurice, are you ready? Yes, I am. So, do you hear me okay? Yeah. Alright, so we'll go slow in this curve, it's really bad. I hope I'm not gonna go in the ditch there. So I came from the west, and this is the first, uh, the first arrest area. And the the silver lining in this situation with uh, with the stinger is uh, is uh, that now I'm 96 feet long, not 105. And I think I mentioned this before, in Michigan, the rule is if you're over 90 feet, you need one escort. If you're over 100 feet in length, you need two escorts. So I'm saving approximately $500. So to get here, it took me two hours, two hours to do 65 miles, 100 kilometers from uh, Moni, uh, Moni, Illinois, that's where I spent the last few days at the Petro there and that's where the, the previous videos were recorded
check this out. The oh, the rear one is the the other one is closed too. It's just all the traffic goes that way. Yeah, unfortunately, this is all I can do. So, we're about 45 miles per hour, right? <laughs> like I said, I'll give you a bonus for the patience and because I was late. Okay. Yeah, when I started in the morning, I was like 60 miles away. I did not expect me to uh, I did not expect uh, it to take 2 hours, you know. Well, there's so many turns in there, right? At least there was not too much traffic. I was able to, you know, go through multiple lanes because I'm so long and the, the rear axles don't turn. So I, I need a lot of room to turn. I could stay on 94 all the way to to uh, Port Huron, but we have to follow the the permit, and the permit says now we're taking uh, 12 east. I hate when it does like this, you know. Now I think I'm gonna, I have to. Oh, and it's a divided highway over here. Oh, but then it ends, okay. approximately to 69 from here Celsius, uh, 
what is that, about 75, 75F. And I'm driving 45 miles per hour, 72K an hour at 14, you see my RPM, right, 1440. So that should be good for the engine because it's not low, so it should give the engine, you know, like lots of cooling power. But of course, I have my AC on because it's hot and the truck is black. Yeah, and I got up this morning uh, 4:30. I, I set up uh, I set up the alarm on my cell phone for five o'clock local time, which is central over there. And 4:30, I cannot sleep. You know, I'm telling you, I was tossing, turning. I'm very nervous about this load. It makes me fearful. You know. And so I got up in the morning. I attached, I bought two more flags. I attached the flags on the front. So I have like three flags on each side. One in the back, two in the middle. And the Michigan wants you to have a flag on the widest point. Like, on, like you know, normally they want flags on each corner or two in the front, two in the back. But once I remember I got a ticket in Michigan because the guy found one bolt that was sticking one inch out. He says, that's your widest point. You're supposed to have a flag in here. And so uh, yesterday I bought two flags extra and I added, I added the, those I put in the front, like brand new flags I put on my bumper. And two more flags are at the widest point, which is that terrain, the gearing is the widest point. And so I did that in the morning. I attached the flags, I attached, a, oh, I have a brand new sign that uh, I bought a while ago, but I didn't use. Because this my current one oversized load it's all torn up and uh, because it keeps rubbing against the license plate in the back there and so that was garbage so I threw that one out because you can also get a ticket for having a old or dirty uh, sign and flags right and uh, and I put the flag at the top there I mean the sign, the sign at the top, they have the where the cables are from the machine. It's sitting like, you know, above the road, so very visible. And Michigan wants me to have two, two flashing lights in the back. They don't say anything about the rooftop light. And in Michigan, I only do what they request because once some very smart cookie almost gave me a ticket for because I, I had a, a rooftop light on the on the truck flashing and he said show me in the permit where it says you, you you have to have a light on the on the truck and I said I'm just trying to keep people safe you know warn people that I'm oversized well I can give you a ticket because it's not on your permit son of a gun and so now yeah if it says if it doesn't say specifically flashing a light on the truck I don't put it on and I rewrite my permit 20 times. It says two flashing lights on the back of the load. And so I activated my, my trailer lights. And then also one interesting thing is that, again, Michigan is trying to be you know, difficult. In normal states, if you're on a road like this, two lane road, this, because I don't think, I don't think this one counts, but yeah, like a you know, regular road, two-lane road. Uh, the pilot is always ahead of you, right? Because there's people coming towards you. So the pilot is in the front uh, trying to warn people. And then once you hit the freeway, divided highway, right? There's nobody coming from the front. People are passing you, so the pilot has to go in the back. 
kind of like to warn people that there's an oversized load ahead of them right but in Michigan again you have to be very careful when you read the permit and we double checked and the, the lady because she's from Michigan she says Michigan recently was uh, changing the rules all the time sometimes it's preceding sometimes it's following and we checked my permit and it says follow like that's it it says one pilot car must follow the vehicle doesn't say two lane roads four lane roads basically always and that's why she's in the back there which for me is a bit unusual but that's what it is so i'm getting uh, i'm getting a hell of a deal at dollar 50 a mile but i was uh 50 minutes late and she was a good sport about it and i said you know you heard me probably say like i said all i can do is like 45 miles per hour I, i'm scared to drive faster and my michigan permit says uh, truck speed 45 miles per hour and i honestly i wouldn't even want to drive faster because there's so much mass in there with this crane it's a scary scary load So we are 417 kilometers from uh, from the from the Canadian border. So 417, so 100 kilometers is 62 miles. So 246 plus 10, 256. So 256 miles. That's what. That's all we have to do today. That's it. Easy. Just stay focused. Don't lose the load. You know be careful drive slow check your chains I already checked my chains like probably three times you know and actually that uh, cheetah bar comes in useful because some of my binders you know those regular like normal wretched binders they have a very thin very thin handle Jesus and so that bar actually goes uh, the, they're so thin they can go inside that bar not all of them only these uh, really old ones and so i use that bar like really you know tighten them tighten make them super tight so i'm not sure how we're gonna take them off i'm probably gonna lose uh, a few binders when i you know when i take them off oh and a good thing when i stopped there i checked my email uh, because i had to print out the um, the permit again for Michigan uh, the permit lady made a mistake everything is correct except for some reason she lost one axle on my truck the truck has nine axles instead of ten because I, I have to have my pusher down you see the green light that means that the lift axle is down that's the rule in in Michigan if you over 80,000 pounds all available axles must be down and I think it's a good rule because it's protecting the road but uh, and that's why I, the, when I woke up this morning I had to uh, I had to move my fifth wheel because I was thinking about this you know my fifth wheel was between the drive axles and so there was not that much weight on the front and so if I put the steer if I put the lift axle down with the fifth wheel in that position that would take a lot of weight from the steer and then steer can be you know it can be dangerous can be very light and so uh, I dropped the legs on the Jeep and I um, and I unhooked my fifth wheel lock and I just jerked slightly forward and backwards until I, I, I heard the click the click sound of the locks open and then I was able to go back with the truck towards the Jeep and then rehook my hoses so that they don't drag on the ground and so we are good so but I see now like before it was 55 or something yeah before I had like 55 psi on fifth wheel now I put the pusher down I have 45 so I'm very light over here on the truck and the Jeep okay good news about the stinger well bad news good news 
uh, I reached out to the to uh, the uh, JC refused to help me uh, like they tried at the London plant I said do you know any other locations where you guys can fix it because you have so many plants the answer from the general manager of the Keswick plant was sorry Sergey I don't that's it that's all he said so that's what you get in terms of customer service from uh, JC Trailer. I understand they did not like my criticism before, but your product is bad, okay? Your product, what you're making, what you, the way you weld things, it sucks. I'm sorry to say. It's inferior product. I would never, ever, ever again buy anything from JC Trailer. And so, Yesterday, I reached out to a couple of uh, shops, many, uh, welding shops, fabricating shops, and then I remembered uh, this other trailer plant. There's another brand that's, be, that's made in, um, in uh, Quebec. And very nice guy in there by the name of uh, Patrick, and he's an engineer. So he's the sales guy and he's the actually plants engineer which I always thought was uh, that's what everybody should do you know when you're calling the plant to buy a trailer I don't want to talk with a guy that has no engineering knowledge you know so this guy is the engineer he's very knowledgeable and uh, actually he offered me to buy a 65 ton trailer from him but uh, they don't offer any trade-ins you know so I'd love to buy his trailer. He has, he has a nice uh, 65 ton with a 3 plus 2 in the back, but I cannot sell my trailer, right? And uh, so anyway, so this guy Patrick, so I asked him, I said, hey, um, he has a few pictures. Uh, would appreciate it if you can help me out. Can you fix this? And he said, uh, yeah. that email I, I just got this morning says, Sergey, sorry, we cannot do it right now. Uh, we're just finishing the um, finishing the things uh, we we had on the on the board before the plant closes for for August, like the first two weeks in 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 August they're closed. But he says I can I can fix your stinger at the end of August. And he says, this will take about two weeks. Two weeks? And he says, um, it will take two weeks because uh, we would have to redesign your kingpin. A redesign. So let me emphasize it again. So when I showed the pictures of the damaged booster to the competitor of JC Trailer, the competitor said pretty much this design sucks we we would not uh, feel well about just fixing this thing into the way it was because that's inferior bad design so we're gonna help you we want to change the design the way we would build it unbelievable and uh, I just asked him, I said, hey, if it takes two weeks, like how much do you think it'll cost? Because the whole stinger was 25,000 Canadian. So if it takes two weeks to finish, you know, like imagine eight hours a day at 100 bucks. What is it? $1,000 a day, five grand a week, 10,000 in two weeks. I cannot do that. I can buy a used one probably. Or I can just keep rolling with, uh, with, uh, just like this with a Jeep and, and the quad in the back there so we'll see what he says if it's not too expensive I'm thinking anywhere up to like 5,000 Canadian so I'm okay with that so what do you do I need I need that stinger so that lady says there's a bunch of cars behind us so we better stop and let them pass otherwise people are gonna freak freak out
too short on the opposite side, so. Yeah, that's quite a lineup. It is. Where did they all come from? We appreciate you. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, I have a YouTube channel, yeah. Yeah, I think I've seen it. <laughs> So the trailer moves, but the load should stay the same. But you see, it's all broken. Like, why are they sending these, you know, super heavy loads this way? Like. So it'll probably take us an hour and a half. Because the lady said it was uh, 55 miles to 69. And we probably did 10 15 so it's like 40 miles so 60 kilometers uh, maybe an hour like that would be but yeah once on 69 at least i can set my cruise at 45 and uh, and do that but yeah see like can break you know axles and airbags yeah so Patrick uh, says uh, from the trailer plant in Quebec he says uh, they can fix it and actually they can make it better so I just hope it's not too expensive. I'm talking about the Stinger, right? So that's gonna solve the problem. So August is not that far. Like, what do you do? I can drive one month without the Stinger. We have another build up car too. Sorry, say again? We have another build up of cars. It's okay. We have, a buy we have construction ahead, there's lights, there's nowhere to go. Not a problem. And I think over 
over here it becomes a divided highway, right? Think so. Sorry? Yeah, so that's where the building over there. So yeah, after this it will be much easier for these guys behind me. Yeah, we have two lanes for a little bit down here. Basically, load like this, you know, it, you get confidence when you uh, check your chain so often, you know, then you see that it's not moving. That I know I did a, a, a good job, even though I'm saying so myself, but there's so many chains in there and they all so tight that I feel, you know, pretty confident in my abilities to secure a load. but. But I'm still driving as if I have a load of raw eggs. You know, if I see the the truck starts jumping too bad, I uh, I slow down. And like I said, I'm driving 72 kilometers an hour, 45 miles per hour. That's it. According to my permit. So don't blame don't blame me. Send a letter to the Michigan DOT. <laughs> All right, so now these guys are gonna be happy. So now they can pass me. Oh, wait a second. Oh, 12 West, okay. I saw these arrows, like what the heck? We're not going there, we have to go East. One car, that's it, one car. That's all, all the noise is about one Chevy, not even a Dodge or Chrysler. okay if he doesn't charge me too much then uh, I'll get the stinger fixed and uh, approved improved at the JC trailer competitor um, and I think I will go back to Google Maps and uh, edit my review for JC trailer one more time one last time Maybe post a couple of pictures of the broken pin. We'll see. And yeah, and I'm like I said I in the previous video I'm I'm waiting for I'm waiting for a quote on a 65 ton uh, 3 plus 2. cheaper to buy everything together I mean not cheaper easier our turn I totally forgot about this like over here we went 12 and um, you know 
if you stay on this road if you keep going straight you actually you leaving you're leaving highway 12 you know and this becomes highway 60 and <laughs> okay and this Teresa lady she says oh don't worry about it that's nothing I said can you how do we stop four lanes of traffic I right, says so that's nothing basically she did it many times before well, because you know I cannot turn like that I don't want to turn 180 degrees because it's very diff it's very hard on the truck son of a gun you know anywhere in the left, right? try to swing all the way back and that's not a good idea so you see I did like this then this and so that kept all the angles uh, pretty small you know not like this okay 12 east this is 12 east right Wait. 
What? What's going on today? I thought we were going under the bridge. We're going over the bridge. This one, this one is one crazy junction. Yeah. I thought it was like a maple leaf, you know, under the bridge and then over. No, but unfortunately it's not that way. Michigan. Cannot live with it, cannot live without it. Exactly. Well, that's why, yeah, because it's a regular highway now, right? Like 12 is just a two lane. Yeah. <laughs> I almost missed it again, you see? We made it. And people are flying from the left at 200 miles an hour. The speed limit is 50. to back but that's too far that's like more than half a mile and we had to back all the way there and you know backing with the Jeep it's not easy and it's dangerous you would have to cover my rear from the back people are flying there so I think this was safer but you see the key was communicating right she's telling me stop this traffic you know if I don't stop, somebody will hit me. We're gonna have some fun in 15 miles. Sorry, 69 is 15 miles away? No, in 15 miles we have a roundabout. What do you mean a roundabout? Oh! 15 miles, there's a centerpiece that we have to go around. Oh, okay, got it. I thought you were talking about a detour or something. Got it. Is that very tight? Sometimes they are. Yeah, this Highway 12. Now the stop sign, you see, and you come to a T intersection. This 12 goes here. Like I don't like highways like this, huh? And of course these guys don't stop. They don't have a stop sign. Only I have. Only I do. And my pilot is super concerned about the traffic behind me. Like I understand that I have to let them go, but I cannot stop every 30 minutes if the people don't know how to. Uh, if they don't know how to pass like there was a broken line on the left and uh, my people are afraid to pass they don't pass so I cannot hold the hand but I did stop probably I don't know three times already letting the traffic go but she's like oh we gotta we have 
traffic behind us. I look in the mirror, we have like four pickup trucks and none of them is a Dodge. So come on, none of them is a Ram. Anyway, she said somewhere here in a couple of miles, there'll be a Speedway, Speedway truck stop. She says there's a place to stop. I think I can see it. And she says there's a McDonald's. I don't care for any McDonald's, but I just want coffee. Well, I see some marathon or something. Is that the one? on the right, right, to let people go. Yeah. So if that one is at the junction with uh, that highway, then it, it's just a couple of miles down the road, right? if you have a pickup truck v8 why are you behind me like it takes you one second even now you see the white white truck if i was in my challenger behind me i would be way before this guy and doing this quite safely because i have the advantage of speed and fast uh, acceleration so don't even get me started on it. feel like this broken line legal to pass where's people Idiots. So why is nobody passing? It's legal to pass. No, I'm just scared. Yeah, I see, so it's not my fault, right? Like, broken line, no traffic, and they're all behind me. No. I think they like your truck, that's why they're behind you. So I should see that, I will see that speedway, right, on the right side? Yeah. 
Well, if if we pass it, then we'll do the same thing. We'll do a U-turn. No big deal, right? Now we know how. We just block all the lanes and go back. surprising me always good and never a dull moment uh yo sergey uh the the to unload you they will need 48 hour notice because they have to fly somebody in there to unload you and to rent a crane and to inspect the damage like to that oil thing i'm telling them i probably need like a thousand dollars for that 48 hours nobody told me about 48 hours but we're gonna call him. We're gonna call him a bit later. Okay, I see the light. So let's see what we can do. Where can we stop for five minutes? So that Admiral Sergei checks the chains and get his uh, second coffee of the day. I see the red light. Well, we are passing mile marker 51 on uh, I-69. Very bumpy. So my cruise control is set at 45 miles per hour. But that sometimes feels uh, fast and we have to stop because the Teresa the pilot she knows all these counties right and she says once we turn onto 96 uh, there's one it, it's, it's one of those counties where they have curfews between 3 and 6 I thought it was only near Detroit no it turns out here on uh, because we are following 96 instead of 69 you know in Lansing like now I'm on 69 going north and that's one once we reach Lansing in like 20 miles instead of staying on 69 we have to take 96 to uh, Detroit and then go on 94 that's how they routed us just to have some fun I guess and, and so there's a curfew there like it's now 245 quarter to three and she says there's a rest area just north of uh, Charlotte, Michigan. So we're gonna stop there. And then she says there's a uh, previous exit has all kinds of coffee shops and restaurants. And she said uh, she'll take me down there in, my, in, in her pickup truck if I want to. I said, hey, you bought me coffee. She paid for coffee at the previous stop. I said, I'll, I'll pay for your food if you take me in your pickup truck. Because <laughs> I don't want to disconnect my truck. And she said, deal. And so I don't think we're gonna make it to Port Huron tonight because uh, the curfew is until six, right? And I'm driving 45 miles per hour. Uh, right now we are still 247 kilometers away, which is 120, like 150 miles. 
and so by from that rest area it'll probably be like 140 miles so 45 times 3 so yeah we need like three hours non-stop driving to do that at 45 miles per hour but there'll be traffic probably right but I can drive until 9 actually I gotta I have to check that because uh, I probably uh, I started driving at uh, what 7 yeah I gotta be careful with my logbook no but 7 yeah I still have time but you know I I, I told her, I said Are you okay staying at the hotel and uh, continuing continuing tomorrow and she says yeah if we have to do that I said yeah because it looks like we, we cannot make it in one day, so I'll have to pay her for the hotel and the mileage. But the most important thing I wanted to say, and we're going to finish this video when, when we stop at the rest area, but the most important thing is my friend uh, from Temisco, Temisco Trailers, I asked him about this, I said, can you fix this uh, booster, JC booster? I sent him pictures, right, and he said uh, it'll take so many hours, like he said, 40, 60 hours. I said, uh, if you're okay with that, we can do it. But he said, we would definitely improve uh, the design because he says the design does not look good. Uh, we used to do it like that. He says, now we don't. And he says, we build about 20 boosters in a year but they do different design and he's an engineer and so he says we're not responsible if something else breaks but he says uh, you can be certain that after we finish this with this that kingpin area will be much stronger and I said yeah okay I understand so if the rest of the stinger is you know bad then at least if it breaks down I can try again JC trailer but I'm not sure I'm not sure I want to work with them again like I'm telling you it's just not a quality product so I'd rather pay somebody so that I because you know I do very heavy loads it can be almost like life and death situation I have I need something that's reliable so anyway um, this guy says yeah we find so it's gonna be like probably 40 hours at 100 bucks canadian so four grand four or five grand plus uh materials and i called him i said hey what about maybe you can buy parts from uh, jc trailer because i think i have a drawing for this thing somewhere on my computer and you know if you call them i'm pretty sure they can sell you parts and patrick says ah oh, we don't want to use their parts <laughs> I said why not he said well I looked at the pictures you sent me um, I don't like the design and he says uh, because we are responsible if we take this project on and you know he he is taking it on he agreed to do it he says we have to be certain that this will not happen again so he says this spot will be much stronger we will redo it you know and I said fine and he says oh and he says even even if we buy their parts all they do is they use the plasma cutter to cut that shape he says we can do it over here and so I'm, I'm super happy about that I'm super happy that these guys will basically redevelop the stinger and he says if you I said okay so I'm not gonna use it as 2 plus 2 because I guess that's too much for this I said I'll just after you fix it I'll just use it as 3 plus 1 and he says no actually uh, once we're done with it I'm pretty sure you can use it as 2 plus 2 as well he says it'll be stronger uh, we'll try to bring you know elements and features from what we do on our trailers and basically I feel fine with that you know basically as they say stuff happens and I'm just lucky that this happened on a dirt road on a private uh, private uh, private area not on the highway where I would have to call a tow truck right and not when I was driving at high speed so I'm, I'm pretty sure this thing would break 
eventually I think it started breaking like just like some guys were noticing those uh, rust areas I think this thing started breaking ever since I tried to use it as 2 plus 2 you know I think it's just not strong enough to support uh, 2 plus 2 because there's a lot of weight uh, it's a poor it's a bad product that's what it is it's a bad product so but the good thing for the next buyer like whoever buys this this will be this will be as good as new and even better okay I'm talking about this thing here because I trust I trust the Misco trailers I trust this guy Patrick I know they can fix it and not just fix it but they can improve it and so if I if I can uh, trade in this trailer and get a 65 ton with five axles in the back I'll just trade in uh, the trailer uh, the trailer with four axles the stinger or the spreader bar and the two uh, flip necks 36 and 83 and I would buy um, trailer with a flip neck and a booster so that the trailer and the booster are all made by the same company and actually I told uh, Patrick I said hey I'd love to buy your trailer but unfortunately you are the manufacturer so you guys don't do trade-ins and um, so I cannot afford two trailers especially you know, these are very expensive trailers right so so that's what's happening so uh, I passed uh, one scale in Indiana today it was a bit of a you know interesting moment the scale was open as soon as I went over the uh, the plates on the road on the ramp you know they, they then they flagged that little arrow left or right right to the scale left bypass I went over those plates so they saw my weight the the arrow light up green to the left bypass well who am I to argue I bypassed I went you know and then I saw there was only one guy over there one officer and he already pulled over somebody like a drive-in and he was busy doing an inspection on the drive-in and then the, the, the Michigan scale was closed for construction uh, the one in New Buffalo and there's only one more scale here on 96 east of Lansing but I'm pretty sure it's uh, construction as well and then I'll just have to deal with uh, there's uh, two scales in Ontario but Ontario they give you much more weight it's my home province uh, still no word on the permit for Ontario and there's nothing I can do so I, I gotta wait I cannot cross into Canada until I get the permit so so that's the latest so now you're up to date and you will see two videos pop up because I did another one yesterday but I could not upload it for some reason the internet became super slow uh, so I'm gonna upload two videos today so one from yesterday where I'm just talking and this video today with driving and some exciting chatting with uh, my pilot Teresa I hope you enjoyed it stay safe be cool catch you later